I found this journal in my local gym alongside some odd looking workout supplements. I've been debating using them, but I'm not sure. What's written in the journal has me second guessing myself, so I'll copy the contents here. Tell me what you guys think I should do. God damn it, Jerry. I told you before, it's never going to happen. You already had your chance. Those were the final words the last time I spoke to my ex-wife. I'm six foot three inches tall and 240 pounds. I had grown into an average dad bod and not very athletically shaped, but by no means fat. Yet she still left me with the excuse that I was too fat for her. I begged and I pleaded with her, claiming I could lose some weight. I, I, I would work out until I was back to her liking. She was willing to hear none of it. Her mind was made up. She was leaving. Yeah, like many of my friends had suggested, I thought there might be something else behind the scenes. I mean, she could have been leaving me for someone else that she had been seeing. I didn't want to picture her thinking about that possibility. I felt that if I didn't imagine it, then it would prevent it from being true. I wanted her back, no matter how much I worked for it. My thought was to lose weight and get into shape, and then maybe I could call her, show her how much I had changed. In my delusional mind, this sounded like the perfect plan. I mean, what's a few weeks at the gym and eating healthier? It's probably something I should have been doing either way, just for myself. So that's what I was going to do. I began by going to the grocery store. I planned all my meals for the next week, paying close attention to the number of calories and sugar and fat content of each item. I, I figured that if the average person required 2,000 calories per day, just as a baseline, I'd be working out and exercising plus reducing my calorie intake to 1,500 per day. I mean, I'm, I'm no doctor or dietitian or, or anything like that. Honestly, I'm just some dude who works in IT for a call center, but that method made sense. Burn more calories than you take in means you lose weight instead of gaining it, right? Going to the gym every day on top of that would help me tone and at least slightly look more muscular along with all the weight that I'd be losing. I felt fantastic on my way home from the store, dreaming about how good I was going to look and how quickly I'd be able to do it if I was determined enough, you know? I thought over and over to myself that this was going to work. I'd soon be getting my ex-wife Stephanie back. Starting the next day was the first day of my mission. I was going to get up extra early, pack my meals for the day, go to the gym for an hour, then to work, then back to the gym for another hour or so. That was going to be my routine every day until I made it where I wanted to be. And, and she took me back. After the first week, I felt terrific. After my Friday workout, I stepped on the scale and I learned that I had already lost five pounds. My plan was working and I had gone from wanting to lose 50 to 45 pounds in one week. My body felt better. I don't know if it was just a delusion of how good I felt, but I thought I thought I already looked more fit. I already, I already looked more muscular. Again, that weekend, I went to the store and I planned out my meals for the next week. I thought Stephanie was bound to be impressed and take me back when I, I completed my transformation. That Sunday night, I was too excited about my progress to stay up, and I went to bed early to wake up and get to the gym the next day. The second week felt rough. My muscles, my body became sore from all the new strain. When I stepped on the scale that Friday at the gym, I noticed I had somehow gained back the five pounds from the week before. There was no excuse I could think of for not keeping on the same loss pattern as before. As I've been told many times before in my life, muscle weighs more than fat. The only problem was when I, when I looked in the mirror, I didn't feel like I'd gained much muscle. My stomach still hadn't changed from the flabby gut that I started with. Still, I stuck to my diet, my workout routine. The third week, I noticed a strange man that I'd often see sitting on a bench in the back of a locker room. He sat in basketball shorts and a hoodie with an oversized hood that dropped down over his face, concealing it in shadows. Every part of exposed skin seemed to bulge with lean muscle. Nothing about the man himself was strange, but what I did find odd was that I never saw him out on the floor lifting any weights. Or really anything but sitting there. I never saw him leave or enter the locker room, but he sat there 
three or four days a week. I ignored his presence for the most part. But after rechecking my weight that Friday and seeing that I had gained another four pounds again without losing any of my gut, I couldn't seem to get the image of him sitting there on the bench at the back of the locker room out of my mind. I thought how eerie it was that I never saw the man move. Nearly to the point, I'm not sure I even noticed him breathing. Although I know he was. The shadow of his hood hid his dark, stoic face. I didn't know if he sat watching all the gym patrons as they came and went, or if there was another purpose for his absence in the locker room. And for so long of thinking about it, I concluded that he must be some sort of security guard, some kind of officer to prevent people from stealing things from the lockers or the gym bags. Although the guy put off a very creepy vibe, you know, it, it sort of made sense to have someone in there. You know? It was like having a, a living security camera when you couldn't legally put a camera in there. My new conclusion of the strange man's purpose still didn't entirely sit right with me, but it was, it was enough for me to carry on with my workout without overthinking it. Though not entirely, I grew accustomed to seeing the man there when I went to the gym. It almost became a ritual for me to check if he was there or not every day when I entered the locker room. I learned that he was in there five days a week, but the days that he was gone were never the same and were never back to back. One week he'd be gone Monday and Thursday, while he might be gone Wednesday and Friday the next. By the end of the second month of paying close attention to my diet and going to the gym every day, I had only seen very little progress. I had only lost six pounds and gained minimal muscle definition. At this rate, be forever before I could get the chiseled physique I needed to get my wife back. I had to keep trying, though. I didn't want to get back into the dating scene again, and she was... She was perfect for me, as far as I was concerned. I didn't know what I had done to win her over in the first place, but if she said that my being out of shape was the problem, well, that was something I could fix. I just had to keep working on it. However, in the back of my mind, I knew that if, if it took too long, my moment might pass and I would never be able to get her back. I began looking online, searching and watching through every little lose your belly fat with this one weird trick I could find, trying to find something that would work for me. I researched all the latest diets and exercise tips and tricks, tried different weight loss supplements, and did nearly anything else that I could think of. In my head, time was running out, and I needed to hurry this along. When she left me, she told me that she didn't want me to talk to her. But I knew that I could change her mind if I did this. Every day, the massive man sat watching me show up, change, push myself into the point of collapse before returning exhausted to the locker room. He would watch as I finished every day by stepping up to the scale and returning to the bench utterly defeated. And then... It happened. He spoke but a single question, as well as moved. I had grown so accustomed to him sitting motionless that I had all but forgotten he was even there. So it startled me to see him move and hear him speak. His voice was deep, his gutturals booming. What would you sacrifice to become? I didn't understand the question, as well clearly shown on my face. My confusion only increased as I watched the behemoth of a man rise from his typical seated position. His footsteps thundered on the ground as he walked to leave the locker room. He was clearly off to whatever else it was he did. And in my panic for answers, I began to bombard him with queries about his odd, chosen question. Uh, become what? Stronger? Thinner? I'd give anything. Please, how can I look like that? No response came from him as he moved. Instead, he simply turned the corner and disappeared. I rushed out of the locker room after him, hoping to get more answers to my questions, but as I entered the main gym area in a panic, I was met with nothing but confused looks. I called out into the gym, asking where the man went. I asked frantically three times before one of the trainers pulled me aside and began to speak to me. Sir, I need you to calm down and explain. You seem to have lost someone. Can you describe them for me? What, do you, what the fuck do you mean describe him? He was like seven foot tall, black guy, built like a brick shit house. I mean, seriously, the guy looked like he chugged gallons of steroids and snorted protein powder. There's no way in hell you could have missed him. He was huge. So where did he go? Did this man take something from you? Did they 
assault you in some form or another. What? No. God damn it. He, he just, he said something to me and he walked out. I need to know what he meant. Please, this is important to me. Okay, now, again, where did he go? At this point, another muscle-ridden personal trainer from the gym had shown up and led the three of us into the back office. Sir, my name's Garrett. Uh, I guess you can consider me as the manager on duty. So we can check the cameras. We can see if we can find a way to know where they went. Garrett led the way, following me and the other trainer that never stated his name. And I didn't care enough to ask. The office was small and quaint. It was sparsely furnished with little more than a small desk and a couple of plastic and wire chairs. A large monitor sat on the desk connected to a slightly outdated computer. The walls were furnished much like I would expect the gym addict's dorm room to look. Posters of protein shake powders, pre-workout supplements, some guy in a speedo flexing an alarming number of muscles at the most recent Mr. Universe or, I don't know, some other weightlifting idol. Typically, I'm a man of moderate to... Impressive amounts of patience. However, something about being within those walls caused all the patience to expel from my body faster than a colony of mice in a burning building. Finally, after some quick typing, a few loud sighs, and some mouse clicks, Garrett turned to me to speak. Are you sure this man left the locker room? Y yes, yes, I, I'm sure. Why do you ask? And how does nobody know what I'm talking about? This behemoth of a guy is in the locker room nearly every damn day i thought that he was some type of security guy for you now you're telling me that he isn't sir i feel this is only going to confuse you more but you were the only person in or out of the locker room for the past 30-ish minutes now what yeah, yeah no joke look for yourself he said as he turned the large monitor to face me Chet, can you go check the locker room to see if there's anyone in there that might fit the guy's description? The other trainer, apparently named Chet, simply nodded and left the room. I watched as Garrett clicked back onto the camera timeline to the point where I first entered the locker room after my workout. As the seconds ticked by into minutes, I watched as no other souls even came near the entrance, let alone went in or came out. Finally, after a few moments of watching the tape, I saw my own face emerge from the doorway, plastered with a look of frantic confusion. I felt as though my brain was short-circuiting. I knew I had seen him leave. I heard the question he boomed at me as he passed. I, I could feel the vibrations on the floor as his footsteps moved him through the room, yet the video... The video did not show even the slightest hint of him leaving ahead of me. Suddenly embarrassed at the situation, I shook my head, trying to clear it. Thoughts began to cross my mind that I may have dreamt the entire scenario up. I looked at Garrett, still slightly confused, as I rose from my seat. I'm sorry, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I haven't been sleeping lately. I, I must have fallen asleep at the locker room or something. Again, I'm so sorry for the hassle. It must have been some really, some really vivid dream or something. Garrett stood up for a second, looking me over with a very skeptical look that he couldn't seem to hide. After a few short seconds, he matched my pose and stood from his chair before responding. Well, in that case, sir, I suggest you head home and get much-needed sleep. Remember, rest is essential for muscle recovery. He flashed me a very smug grin, and it was all I could do to prevent myself from rolling my eyes at him before leaving the room. As I walked back to the locker room to gather my things, I again ran into Chet, who decided to stop me. Hey, sir, I couldn't find any trace of the guy you were talking about. You sure everything's cool, bro? Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. I'm all good. I spoke with Garrett a little more. I think I may have just dreamt it up due to some sleep deprivation. Oh, okay. Well, rest is important to muscle recovery. Yeah, I know. Garrett said the same thing to me. I interrupted. I'm going to head home and let myself recover, as you call it. Chet seemed slightly offended that I finished his sentence for him and left for the office without another word. As I reached for my bag and left to go, I noticed that something felt off about it. It felt heavier than I remembered it being when I brought it in. Not just by a few ounces, either. If that had been the case, I doubt I would have noticed. It was heavier by five or more pounds, acting a little more enthusiastically than was necessary for the situation. I dropped the bag, I ripped the zipper open, and I threw the flap back. Sitting under an extra pair of gym shorts was a small container that looked to have some sort of pills inside, along with two tubes of a very strange-looking cream. The labeling on the item was a paradox. 
He somehow looked both amateur and professional at the same time. It was as if a bootleg copy was actually the real deal. The tubes of cream had a picture of a very gaunt but happy-looking person with a cartoon-looking speech bubble. Inside the bubble were the words, The weight just falls off. I couldn't help but admit that something about the advertising seemed very compelling to me. I mean, after trying nearly everything else I had found, maybe this one would be what I needed to drop the pounds and get my ex-wife back. I decided to take the cream and pills back to my place to inspect them further. As I turned to leave, I caught a quick glance at myself in the mirror. My ex-wife's voice instantly bellowed through my mind. How do you expect me to love you when you're as fat and lazy as you've gotten? Some people might think that she was being mean and rude, but it's okay because she was right. I mean, how could she love me when I had put on an extra 10 or 20 pounds? That's not the person she married. I'd become a fat slob and it was okay for her to feel like that and say that stuff, right? Either way, it didn't matter because I, I was going to lose the weight. I was going to get her back. I just hoped that this new stuff would do the trick. The strangeness of how it appeared in my bag was easily overshadowed by the possibility of it helping me achieve what I wanted. When I got home, I dumped my gym bag out into the counter like a drunk girl trying to find her car keys. I grabbed the container of pills and began reading the label. It seemed to be the same branding as the tube of cream, and in my excitement, I merely skimmed over a lot of the information written until I got to the directions for use. The bottle told me, for the best results, take one pill morning and night for a month. I thought that would be easy enough, and it even said that it didn't need an extensive workout regimen to go with it. The instructions for the cream were even more straightforward. They said apply cream to problem areas once a day, and the fat burning ingredients would make it all fall away. I figured that if I used these two items, plus I kept up my workouts, I'd lose the weight and be back with my ex in no time at all. It seemed like a relatively foolproof plan to me, and even if I had no proof that it was him, I knew that the strange giant of a man from the locker room was the one that left this stuff in my bag. I thought to myself that whether or not he responded, I needed to thank him next time I saw him. Those first few days, I decided to only take the pills, and I'd add the cream after the first week. The pills made my jaw ache and made me feel like I had turned into a furnace. The amount of heat that began to radiate from my body alarmed me at first, however I soon began to think this must be why they called it fat burning. A sudden rise in body heat caused me to feel the need to check my temperature. Although it was definitely elevated, it never seemed to reach what I would consider fever levels. After the first week, I began to add the cream to my weight loss regime. It was very similar to the pills in the sense that it caused wherever I applied it to have an intense burning sensation. They worked, though, and I've been more excited about it. In the first two weeks, I had lost eight pounds, which was better than what I had accomplished in the months at the gym before. I was hooked. It, it worked so well, I even stopped going to the gym. I, mean, I didn't need to anymore. As long as I followed the directions, the weight just kept going away. By the time I had lost 12 pounds, all I could think about was losing more. The only thing on my mind was waiting till I could take the next pill. I quickly lost any desire to eat or even sleep. Pacing back and forth from the counter in the kitchen to the scale in the bathroom, I suddenly remembered my original purpose. Her words again rang in my mind. Some comment about how being the fat, ugly fuck that I was, nobody would ever want to love me. Her exact words didn't matter because... As I stood on the scale for the tenth time that day, I noticed that I had lost another pound since that morning. I was going to do it. I was going to win her back for sure. I yelled out in excitement at the progress I was seeing. I know I already used the cream today, but what could it hurt if I double it up? It should cause it to work faster, shouldn't it? I muttered to myself as I walked to the counter. Putting on a second coat of the cream caused my flesh to burn much more than usual, but... It also somehow began to give me a numbing sensation. The nerves in my stomach and chest dulled to the point that I could barely feel my finger as I poked my belly. Well, that's an interesting side effect, I thought to myself. As I finished rubbing the layer over my body, the numb feeling began to overtake my entire form, and as much as I thought that it was better than the burning pain, it proved to cause normal functions to become difficult. 
My balance seemed to be thrown off because of the fact that I couldn't feel when my feet touched the ground. After that first day, I began to understand how to function, you know, basically without my sense of touch. It took a lot of guessing and a lot of trial and error, but by the end of the day, I seemed to be able to move around as if nothing had happened. I even convinced myself to check the scale and mirror. I looked skinnier and I... I felt lighter. The scale said that I had only lost another four pounds, but I thought... I thought that if I began to use the cream twice a day instead of once, I'd be able to lose weight much faster and finally, I'd be able to get my ex-wife back. She would be so pleased by my progress. I just knew it. The next day after putting on my second layer of cream and taking the pills as always, I decided that with losing the weight, I should start going back to the gym to build some muscle in place of my missing fat. Driving my car to the gym with my body completely numb proved to be much more dangerous than I had anticipated, but I managed to make it in one piece. I walked in filled with more confidence than I'd ever had. Until I began to hear the whispers. Hey, look at that guy. Oh, why does he look like that? Is it safe for him to be in here? That looks really bad. Is his skin boiling? That's disgusting. Yeah, why is he all yellow and purple like that? I did my best to ignore everything that I heard and just get on with my workout. As I was doing curls with some free weights, I was able to see what they had been talking about. The mirror before me displayed a terrifying sight. The skin on my biceps and around my ribs had turned a yellowish purple. Blisters began to form over the bruises. The voice in my head began to scream about how disgusting I looked. My focus quickly shifted from my own reflection to the reflection of everyone else in the gym. They looked like they were hidden behind various pieces of equipment snickering at me. I could feel their eyes on me, and the sudden flood of embarrassment filled my body with fear. But what if I say it like this? What if, what, what if I was getting sick from the cream? Do I need to go to the hospital? I nearly crushed my feet as I dropped the weights in my hands and tried sprinting out of the door. After the first few strides, my numbing coordination failed me, and I fell hitting the ground hard. I could feel a few of the blisters in my chest and arms burst as I made contact with the matted floor. I quickly stood up and rushed again for the door, again falling after only a few strides. My heart pounded in my chest and I screamed out in pain as more blisters broke and drug raw flesh across the ground. Pus poured from the blisters, and in a sad attempt to reduce the scene that I was creating, I stood again and attempted more of a calculated walk to my car. By the time I made it there, I convinced myself that all the hospital would do was waste my time on something that I could, I could do myself at home. So instead, I stopped on the way home, and I purchased antibiotic creams, I purchased bandages, and a large roll of gauze. When I reached my house and made it inside, I removed my shirt, only to realize... It was... It was much worse than I thought. Or possibly had progressed since I left the gym. My entire torso, everywhere I had used the cream, had turned into a black, yellow, and purple bruise. Various blisters covered my chest and had burst, leaving a disgusting yellow trail of pus flowing down my body. The smell of necrotic flesh filled my nostrils as the yellow ooze flowed from my burst blisters. I quickly wrapped my wounds in bandages and gauze as I repeated the same few phrases over and over again. It's working so well. I can deal with this. It'll go away after I'm done. I just, I just gotta keep going. As soon as I was done wrapping up all of my new development. I couldn't stop myself from getting on the scale. I had lost nearly 50 pounds. And bandaged chest aside, I felt like I looked great. I at least felt like I looked better than I did, but I was also beginning to see myself the way Stephanie saw me. I wasn't perfect yet. I at least felt like I looked better than I did, but I also, f I also began to see myself the way Stephanie saw me. I wasn't perfect yet, and I could lose more weight and, and gain more muscle. I was too excited by how far I had come, and I sent a message to my ex, asking me to meet up and see what she thought of my progress. I was already convinced that I had made strides in my progress, and honestly, I thought that I had already achieved the look that she was looking for. Somehow, I'll admit, I was slightly surprised when she agreed. That Friday, she agreed to have dinner with me. That was only a few days away, and I, I could still lose more by then. Everything was going just the way I had imagined it would. 
I knew the boils and bruises were there, but I could always hide them with bandages and, and, and a shirt. I couldn't even begin to describe the excitement that filled my body at, at the thought of getting my wife back. I did my best not to bother her until Friday, which wasn't very hard because I focused on my new routine. The cream still burned my skin as I put it on, but it seemed to be working. The blisters and the discoloration seemed to be getting worse. But I could worry about that after I had dinner with Stephanie. After all, I could just hide it until later when I finally stopped needing the pills and the cream. The pills seemed to increase the effects exponentially. I did notice that my skin had turned... wet. And slimy. Around the blistering areas. I just, I just thought that, that as long as it didn't spread to an area I couldn't cover up with pants and a shirt, I would be fine. I was only slightly scared at realizing that with all the exercise and very limited diet, my health began to decline. However, I simply kept thinking of a couple of old sayings like, beauty is pain and, and the risk is worth the reward. I got to her old favorite restaurant early. That way I could be there with a table waiting for her. The place wasn't a five-star place, but it was fancy. Food was terrific. The table I got wasn't at the front window, but it was, it was close enough for me to see her walk up to the building. My heart raced with anticipation. I was, I was so excited at how well this was going to go. She walked in and I could see as the hostess led her over to my table, she she looked up. She stopped about ten feet short of the table with a, a jaw-dropped smile before beginning to speak, or rather exclaim, Oh my god, you... look at you! You look so much better! The dinner was great. I was as giddy as a schoolgirl because I, it was going just as I had imagined. As we stood up just before leaving, my heart screamed with desire for things to go back to how they were before. The reality of what was going on with my body snapped back into the front of my head as she went in for a hug. As her body pressed against mine, I could feel a few more blisters on my chest burst beneath the bandages. Walking out of the restaurant, she nearly caused my jaw to fall to the floor. She whispered something in my ear. Why don't we go back to my place for a while? I nearly had a, a, a miniature panic attack as my heart began to race. This was going so much better than I had I'd even dreamed of. If she wanted to do what I, what I thought she wanted to do, I didn't know what to do about the wounds and, and the bruises all over my body. I was terrified that she would see, but followed that thought by telling myself that I could just keep my shirt on. Everything would be fine. I would just still hide it until I could deal with it another time. It'd work out great until later when I could focus on that problem. Oh, well, I suppose with how good it's been seeing you, what better way to end the night? I finally responded. On the one hand, it felt as though we were moving extremely fast, but I also realized that it wasn't very long ago that we were married. That afterthought made me feel even more that things were just getting back to how they were, rather than starting over, so to speak. As we lay in our bed, things quickly became serious. I tried my hardest to get in the mood for what was to come, but every time she rubbed against my body, I could feel another blister burst under the bandages. I prayed to gods I didn't even believe in that the smell wouldn't permeate the bandages or, or give everything away. Finally, she removed her clothes in front of me, and I once again saw the uh, amazing body I so missed. She said the words I'd been dreading most. Your turn. Take those clothes off. I removed my pants, but I kept my shirt on, and I went in to progress the night, but she stopped me. Shirt too. I want to see all those new muscles you have. Uh, I... I can't. There's, uh... There's something up with my chest. I, I'd rather keep the shirt on. Take the shirt off, or this isn't happening. She demanded. I removed my shirt. Reluctantly, as fear flooded my body, I only exposed the bandages, but it was enough to cause my fear to spike as she spoke. Why are you all wrapped up? Take it off. I want to see. No, trust me. You, you don't right now. This, this will go better if you don't see it. Remove it now. 
she said in a rather unnecessarily stern voice. Sheepishly. I removed the bandages, revealing the boils and blisters that covered my chest and stomach. Her instant repulsion floored me and caused my heart to slam into my stomach as it fell. She retched and nearly puked off the side of the bed, screaming the same two words over and over. Get out. I grabbed my clothes and for some reason the bandages and I ran out of the house as I put it all back on. Part of me felt ashamed that my brain began screaming at me that I could fix this. I could, I could make my body perfect. I just had to get back to the gym. I had to keep using the products. That's all that I needed to make this work. But unfortunately, I couldn't help myself from giving in to that second thought. The next day I was back at the gym. I was pushing myself to the limits as I drove myself to form the perfect body. The creams, the pills, they helped. As I struggled through the burn and the blisters, however, I noticed that no matter how much of the supplements I used, they always remained just as full as if I as if I'd never opened them. The blisters and the bruises began spreading over my entire body. I could see it traveling down my arms and my legs as I used it more and more. I had grown accustomed to ignoring the remarks and the snickers of other gym inhabitants. I'd burst a new blister, releasing that foul-smelling pus with each rep, and I could I could tell as everyone seemed to keep their distance from me. I, I assumed that it was from the looks or the wounds or the, or the smell, but I knew that I could make my body perfect if I kept going. I would make it suitable for her, no matter what. The following week, I finally learned just how bad it had gotten. I walked into the gym with a welcoming party of disgusted looks and people going out of the way to avoid me. I dropped my bag off in the locker room. I took the pills. I rubbed the cream all over my blister-covered body, popping a few. As I walked out onto the gym floor, my clumsiness caused me to run shoulder-first into one of the machines. The next few moments became a blur as I heard a wet splash followed by screaming. I ricocheted off of that machine and I bumped into another. The second impact was quickly followed by another sloppy splat of a sound and more screaming. And by the time I looked down, I'd realized chunks of skin and flesh had fallen from my body with each impact. The splashing sound had been the meat landing on the floor. I felt my heart skip a beat as one of the trainers approached me. Chet was his name and he seemed very concerned. Instead of responding to his patronizing claims, saying that I needed a hospital immediately and that he was a breath away from removing me from the gym, I panicked. I ran from him to the locker room, pulling the cream and the pills from my bag. I threw them as hard as I could to the locker room corner, causing them to bounce off the massive man that I noticed was once again sitting in his usual place. I had so many questions for him, but all I could get out was, why? Why me? He stood as he spoke his final words, traversing the locker room and walking out the door. Your greed was your demise. Did you get what you wanted? Or as Icarus, did you fly too close to the sun? Your tragedy is your own doing. I sat nearly in tears in the locker room terrified, scribbling furiously in my journal as his words dug deep into my mind. Seconds after his footsteps left the locker room, hurried men ran into the room, pushing a gurney. My heart raced, my nerves tense as I let out a brief horrified scream as I looked down, realizing I had begun bleeding profusely after my skin had removed itself while watching him watch over me. Sir? Sir, are you all right? said one of the paramedics. I can fix this. I can fix this. I can make this perfect. Hey there, kids. It's me, Mr. Cube Pasta. I want to tell you thank you so much for watching today's video on YouTube or listening to today's episode of the podcast on the podcast. You know, depending on where exactly 
you're listening or watching. If you're on YouTube, hey, I would very much appreciate it if you guys click the like on this video, if you guys left a comment of what your favorite story is, and if you guys hit that subscribe button. You can also hit the bell, but I don't know what that does. So I think it's broken still, but hey, it helps. And if you're on the podcast, I'd very much appreciate it if you hit subscribe on the podcast or or like on the podcast. I don't know if you can like podcasts, but if you can, hey, that's something I'd appreciate. And of course, like always, I want to give a very big thank you to everybody who supports me at patreon.com slash Mr. Creepypasta. You guys, as always, are the main MVPs of this story of every night's story and you guys help me keep the lights on here so without further ado i want to give a very big thank you to jordan alexander sanchez stephanie butler bobby carmen tanya oren tristan pelton chance burnett diana kraus that one guy lupita galvin that creepy chick tyler fletcher rebecca harper murky moo red shadow cat xavier the cheyenne demix sean Cadu baker six gay rats in a trench coat turtle man rob like sharp things chaos art cryolinian milk and meal zachary grafius gorang tramagasy maria walker pain gravy crazy kid mr marcus Blitz, Aka Limchok, Dirt Diver, Matt Bach, Jabbles Raz, Voice of Sand, Coffee Zombie, Matthew McNeese, Shelly J, Jeremy H, Raltazal, Ficomel, Nana, Nick Weaver, Deleted Account, Melted Lake, Holly Sue, Guy Mara Ravenswood, William King, Darth Miver, Michael Ortiz, Satanic Aries, Nessie, Ronnie Hansen, Bardo Hawk 764, Lambda M98, Harley, Sashi Sazaku, Croconut 509, My Body Sounds Like Rice Krispies, Kaylee Ambrose, Suji Campbell, Trickin, Azarine Fox, Freddy Krueger, Nicholas Zaccardi, Happy Birthday, Jason Wilson, Lisa Cottrell, Caspian, Hades Nephew, Tater Chip, Acid System, Prozac and Pan. Pancake Appreciation Society, Cryptic Nightmares, Kiri the Sloth, Tommy Green, Fester's Lampshade, Guy Harbor, Nico Kyle, Rafael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Polson, and Corey Kenshin. As always, thank you guys so very, very much. Thank all of you who are in the description down below, and honestly, thank all of you that can give anything, even when it comes down to just one dollar. I appreciate you guys very, very much. I love all of you, and I love all of you out there who are listening, liking, subscribing, doing all that good jazz. Sweet dreams. <laughs>